Season's greetings, everyone. I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. You know, with Christmas coming up next week, children all over the world are getting really excited for Santa Claus and the presents that they hope he'll give them. But at the same time, older folks tend to move on from their childhoods, as well as the figures that we all know about, like the Sandman, Tooth Fairy, and others. But thankfully, I'm not one of those adults who do that, because, as I've said many times on my show, losing my youth or my childhood means losing myself. Also, if you may recall, about several months ago, while I was blogging Blue Sky's Epic, I mentioned a book series known as The Guardians of Childhood, which was put together by author William Joyce. To me, while looking at these books at Barnes & Nobles, they are really exciting stories, and they really bring a smile to my face. However, for today's blog, we're going to look into a DreamWorks movie which serves as not only a continuation to the books, but also makes these childhood characters into superheroes. Released on November 21st, 2012, the movie is Rise of the Guardians. Now let's get started. Generation after generation, immortal guardians like Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, the Sandman, and the Tooth Fairy join forces to protect the world's children from anything that would threaten their hopes and beliefs. But when the evil boogeyman, Pitch Black, schemes to throw the world into eternal darkness, it's up to the Guardians and their newest recruit, Jack Frost, to put a stop to the boogeyman and his army of nightmares. So, what do I think of the movie? Well, this is a really awesome movie, and it has got to be one of my favorite movies from DreamWorks. Plus, I find it to be very underrated these days. But, sadly, while the movie did receive positive reviews, and it grossed about $306 million against its $145 million budget, it became a box office bomb. And why is that? Well, it's mostly due to production and marketing costs. And it sadly made DreamWorks lose about $83 million. But let's move on to Mustang Notes and see what I like about it. The idea for Rise of the Guardians came from William Joyce's daughter, Mary Catherine Joyce, who asked him what it'd be like if Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny met. In 2005, William Joyce and Real FX launched a joint venture, Ainsworth Amusements, to produce a CGI animated feature film, one of which was said to be The Guardians of Childhood based on Joyce's idea. The film was not realized, but they did create a short animated movie called The Man in the Moon, directed by Joyce himself, which introduced The Guardians' idea and served as an inspiration for the film. Early in 2008, Joyce sold the film rights to DreamWorks after the studio assured him it would respect his vision for the characters and that he would be involved with the creative process. In November 2009, it was revealed that DreamWorks had hired Peter Ramsey to make his feature debut as director of what was then titled The Guardians and playwright David Lindsay Alvarez to script it. Joyce acted as co-director for the first few years, but left his position after the death of his daughter, who died from a brain tumor. The movie is dedicated to her memory, as well as a beautiful song called Still Dream, sung over the end credits by Renee Fleming. Oh, how sad. My condolences to you, Mr. Joyce. 
Anyway, moving on. Joyce continued to assist as an executive producer while Ramsey took over as full director, making him the first African American to direct a big budget CGI animated movie. As with some previous DreamWorks films like Megamind and the Kung Fu Panda sequels, Guillermo del Toro came on board as executive producer. Plus, he was able to help shape the story, character design, theme, and structure of the movie. He said that he was proud that the filmmakers were making parts of the film dark, moody, and poetic, and expressed hope that this might set a different tone for family movies for entertainment films. The final title, Rise of the Guardians, was announced in early 2011. Also to note, this was the last DreamWorks animated movie to be distributed by Paramount Pictures. Now, what do I think about the animation? Well, let me say it like this. This style of animation puts DreamWorks past films like Shrek, Kung Fu Panda, and How to Drink Your Dragon to shame. I mean it, folks. The character designs in this film are very creative. Plus, the characters' skin, hair, clothes, and how they move, even stuff like feathers, fur, and sand, all look amazing. Plus, the action in this movie is really intense, including all the fight scenes. As for the story, well, in my opinion, it is very epic, but at the same time, it feels like the Avengers or the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Also, I don't know if this is possible, but it kind of does feel like The Nightmare Before Christmas and Rudolph and Frosty's Christmas in July due to there being two holidays in the movie. However, despite all that, some of my favorite scenes include the parts where the Guardians help collect the children's teeth help with the Easter eggs, as well as the scene where everybody goes sledding and play with snowballs during the ending climax. So, now that we're done with Mustang notes, let's move on to the characters and their voice actors. Our main character, Jack Frost, is voiced by Chris Pine, whom you may remember from the 2009 Star Trek reboot. But aside from that, he's also been in Into the Woods, A Wrinkle in Time, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and Wonder Woman with Gal Gadot, which will be getting a sequel next year. Jack Frost is a rebellious teenage kid and a winter sprite who enjoys creating mischief and has no interest in being bound by rules or obligations. He just wants to use his staff to spread his winter magic, create blizzards, as well as snow days for the sake of fun. But at the same time, Jack wants to be believed in. Also, Jack has the ability to fly along the wintry wind. At the end of the movie, Jack becomes the guardian of fun. In my opinion, Chris Pine does a great job voicing Jack. Plus, his backstory was really shocking when he saved his sister before he fell into a frozen lake. However, if there's one thing that irritates me about Jack, it's the whole shipping nonsense between him and Elsa which has been going on for far too long. Now, let me make this perfectly clear. Just because Jack and Elsa have the same element doesn't mean they should be together. And keep in mind that Jack Frost is centuries older than Elsa. <sighs> but overall, Jack is still a fun character. Plus, by looking at his hairstyle, he kind of looks like Roxas and Ventus from the Kingdom Hearts games. Next we have Nicholas St. North, 
aka Santa Claus, the leader of the Guardians and the Guardian of Wonder, voiced by Alec Baldwin, whom has been in Madagascar Escape to Africa, the Boss Baby, Rock of Ages, the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, and just recently, Arctic Dogs. To me, this version of Santa is quite different. He lives in an ice castle at the North Pole, and rather than being a jolly old fat man who delivers toys to children, he's also a Russian Cossack, complete with furry hat, accent, and a pair of swords. Plus, the naughty and nice lists are tattooed to his arms. Plus, he is assisted by yetis and elves to make the toys for the children. Also, in my opinion, Baldwin's performance as Santa was very unrecognizable. Also, while Santa can be fierce, he can also be jolly and fun at the same time. The Easter Bunny, a.k.a. E. Aster Bunnymund, is voiced by Hugh Jackman, a.k.a. Wolverine from the X-Men films. And during the same year, he got to be in Les Miserables. Bunny is the fabled keeper and bringer of Easter eggs and the guardian of hope. Now, this version of the Easter Bunny is a six-foot-tall Australian rabbit with gauntlets, knows martial arts, carries a pair of boomerangs, and he can make transportation tunnels just by tapping his foot on the ground. Man, that kind of reminds me of what the rabbit in Hop can do. The Tooth Fairy is voiced by Isla Fisher, whom I know as Mary Jane from the 2002 Scooby-Doo movie. And she got to voice Dr. LaRue in Dr. Seuss's Horton Hears a Who, and she voiced Beans in Rango. Tooth Fairy is the mythical tooth collector and the guardian of memories. She is part human and part hummingbird. She's also assisted by tiny fairies that are split off extensions of herself. She collects the children's teeth, which hold all their precious memories, and keeps them safe in her palace and returns memories when they are needed the most. Next we have the Sandman, aka Sandy, who sadly is a silent character and has no voice actor. But that's what makes him unique, kind of like Tinkerbell from Peter Pan, but a lot more badass. Anyway, Sandy is the guardian of dreams, as well as the oldest of the guardians, and of course, the first guardian chosen by the man in the moon. What I like about Sandy is that he communicates through Sandy images that he conjures up above his head, and he wields a pair of sand whips, and he can create horses, dolphins, stingrays, airplanes, even dinosaurs out of sand. Next we have the villainous Pitch Black, aka the Boogeyman voiced by Jude Law, best known from Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events, and Captain Marvel. Pitch is the essence of fear, and he's the Nightmare King. To me, Pitch is a really creepy character. Plus, the way he looks is odd, with a long nose, dark spiky hair, messed up teeth, and the fact that his body is all black and white. And let's not forget that he can turn into a living shadow, use darkness as a weapon, and turns dreams into nightmares. And I mean literal nightmares, in the form of monstrous horses made of black sand that feed on people's fears. Now that's just scary. But, at the end... Pitch becomes scared of his own nightmares after being forgotten. Finally, we come to Jamie Bennett, voiced by Dakota Goyo, 
who got to be a young Thor in this awesome film, and he played a young Noah in this piece of garbage. Now, Jamie is a child who has not given up on believing in the Guardians. To me, Jamie is a rather curious young boy who is fascinated by the mysterious and supernatural world. He is also interested in Bigfoot and aliens. Plus, he's brave, creative, and resourceful, and he also has an active imagination. And now let's move on to my final words. Overall, Rise of the Guardians has got to be one of DreamWorks' best movies ever. And while it was sadly a box on its bomb, I still find it to be a very underrated movie. While it still suffers from an overdone story and cliché plot lines, it makes up for it with its characters, animation, and sense of nostalgia. Plus, the action in this movie is really epic, and it really made me feel like a kid again after seeing this movie in theaters with my grandmother all those years ago. Plus, this is a really fun movie for both kids and grown-ups. And I just hope that someday, DreamWorks can make a sequel, or maybe an animated TV series, where we might see other characters like Cupid, Mother Nature, and many more. Still, I recommend everybody to watch this movie, especially during the holidays. I give this movie a 97% out of 100. Well, that's it for Season 7 of Mustang Prince Oral Reports. Be sure to join me again in 2020 for Season 8. Until then, this is Joshua Oro of the Mustang Prince saying, Mustang Power, and have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a Happy New Year.